Hey everyone, Urban Fish Keeper here. I hope you're all doing well and you're having a really good weekend. Uh, it's an absolute scorcher here today, really hot. Um, and today I'm going to be doing a project, but before I get started and run you through what this project's about, I firstly want to say a massive thank you to everybody that subscribed. Um, I do appreciate it, thank you very much. To those that leave comments and ask questions, you know, th that's what it's about for me on this channel, is about getting those questions and trying to answer as many of them as I possibly can. So thank you very much for that as well. And then um, just also I wanted to say a thank you to my wife who made me another Urban Fish Keeper shirt because she said the other one I've worn it too many times. So she made me another one. So thank you to her for making me another Urban Fish Keeper t-shirt. Right, so in the thumbnail, um, you would have seen me holding an overflow box. So what is an overflow box? An overflow box is something that you use on an aquarium where you don't want to drill a hole in order to have the water flowing into a sump. And that's when you use an overflow box. Now, there could be many reasons when you decide to use one. One is you've got an old tank and you're hesitant about drilling a hole in the glass or you don't feel comfortable with it, you can use an overflow box because you want the water to flow from the main tank into a sump. It's really when you're connecting a sump is when you use the overflow box. The other, the other reason a lot of people use it is if you've got an existing aquarium, um, let's say for argument's sake you've got a Malawi set up and you've got a tank full of Malawis and your canister filters or the filtration you're using is just not coping with the bio load or you would like to increase your water volume and add more fish to that aquarium. Now, a reasonably easy way of doing that is by adding a sump filter. But you don't necessarily want to drain everything out, catch all the fish out, drill the hole, um, put that in and then pipe that up into the sump. What you can then do is you build an overflow box. And the principle of an overflow box is very simple. You've got, and again, I'm going to use the, um, once it's completed, I'll use the, um, the Kmart 20 liter to show you how it actually works. Um, but, but as an example, you know, what, you, what the overflow box does is you've got one side of the box on the inside of the aquarium, one side of the box on the other, outside of the aquarium. Um, the outside box, the water flows into the sump, there's a pump that pumps it back up into here, into the aquarium, and that water then goes into the box on the inside and then transfers to the box on the outside. And the way that it transfers is with a U-bend, or well, pipe going from the outside container to the inside container as such and that is filled up with water and as the pressure increases on the inside of the aquarium so it pushes the water through the pipe and it flows out the back but as I build through it I'll explain all these things to you so this video may take a little bit longer than normal but you know get yourself a cold one have a cup of tea have something warm if you're in a cold climate um, sit back relax and and enjoy this one with me now, for this particular build, what I've done is I've gone reasonably small, um, and the reason is I want to use it, or I want to show you on this aquarium. But what I'm doing here, the, the, the principles and the design and the way I go about making it, um, it, it can be used on any size aquarium, and all you do is you just make the overflow box bigger and bigger as you require. And even the outlets coming out of the overflow box, you can have multiples of those as well. But I'll explain that as I go along. So what I've got is I've got a whole lot of pieces of acrylic, and I'm working with acrylic again. Um, I prefer to build these out of acrylic. So I've got a whole lot of pieces of acrylic that I've now cut down to size. That's going to build both the outside container as well as the inside, and I'll show you that. This piece that I've got here that's got this piece of wood attached to it at the moment, this is effectively what the, over, the total length of the overflow box, but it's going to be bent. So this will be bent into a U, and I'll show you how I do that. One side will hang on the, inside, on the inside of the aquarium, and the other side will be on the outside of the aquarium. What I've also done is I've drilled a little hole, and I've put through a nylon um, uh, screw through there, um, or nylon little bolt screw, which, whatever you want to call it, and I'll explain to you why I've done that um, as I go through it. So what I'm going to get started on, oh, before I tell you what I'm going to get started on, let me just tell you more or less some of the stuff that you'll need. Because we're working with acrylic, um, I'm using, again, as you've seen in some of my previous projects, 
I'm using Acribond 105 and that's to bond my acrylic pieces. But as I've explained in previous projects where I've worked with acrylic, ideally if you, if you can get your acrylic cut on a laser cutter, you'll get really smooth edges. And something like the Acribond will work extremely well because the surfaces are so smooth and it'll be really strong bond. If you're using a handsaw to do this or you're using a blade method or one of the other methods, where in my case I've used a CNC router to cut mine out, um, the, the reality is that the sides are not absolutely smooth. Now I could take fine sandpaper and smooth them down, but what I'm going to do is I still use my Acribond to create the structure. And then, in particularly on the outside of the aquarium where there's that container that the water flows into that then goes back to the sump, I then use, as I've used before, which is the Acrifix, um, the 0192, which is this stuff. Okay, and this is what I then use where I really want a strong bond and I don't want to worry about something breaking. And in particular with an overflow box, if something goes wrong with a little container on the inside, which I'll show you what that looks like as we build it, that's not the end of the world because it will still continue siphoning. The risk you run is that a fish gets in the pipe and blocks the pipe. But if the container on the outside of the aquarium goes, that is a very different problem because what will happen is it will just keep draining the water until it gets to below the siphon level of the U-bend pipe that's going between the two. And I'll go through that a little bit more as I'm building it. Um, from a requirement point of view, as I've said, for the acrylic, that's what we're going to use to bond the acrylic. Uh, you need a tape measure, you know, the normal, something to clean with. Um, to work with the acrylic, some syringes, some needles to, to do it. I also um, use alcohol swabs to clean off the acrylic edges. You need something to drill a big hole for a fitting. Um, and I'll show you that fitting as well. Again, I just use you know, the holes, these hole, these kind of hole saws, um, it's, it's up to you, which, you know, depending on the size that you're using, <coughs> excuse me, uh, screwdriver, you need a drill. I'm going to use a little bit of silicon uh, for the fitting on the outside box, the box that goes to the sump, and I'll show you where I use that. Um, I've got some nylon nuts, um, some nylon little bolts, um, which, which I'll show you where those go and what I use them for, drill bit. Um, the other thing that I've got, and you don't need to have this, is I've got a, a tap and die set. Now, you don't need to go out and buy a tap and die set. You only need the size, um, the size that you want to use for this screw at the bottom, and I'll show you where that comes in. Effectively, what that does is it keeps, it keeps it level to the glass, so you don't have that happening or it moving, you screw this in, it pushes against glass and it holds it in place purely just because it's, it's preventing this from swaying. Um, and that's the only place that I use the tap and die set for. But you can go to your local hardware store. Um, in my case, I've used a 3mm, but you can go and buy you know, a 3mm, 4mm, depending on the nylon or plastic bolts or nuts that you're going to be using. Um, you can just buy one of those loose and you can use that then to uh, create the hole with the, the threaded hole that you can turn the screen. All right, so basically that's what you need from a, from a equipment point of view. Now, when it comes to, to working out, you know, how big do I need to make it, etc. my view on the overflow boxes is that, yes, you can go too big, but I'd rather go bigger than smaller because where it becomes important is on the box that's on the inside of the aquarium where the water flows through, flows into and then from there goes to the box behind, is what is going to determine the volume of water you can push through. Because you will either have grids like this cutting it, which you will do, or if it's easier you just drill a whole lot of holes. But that is your restriction. So the longer that is, the more water can flow through into the box and therefore you can have a, 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 a higher volume flow of water coming back from the sump to the aquarium. So just consider that when you're doing it and you don't have to like I've done you cut out these grooves you can just drill a whole lot of holes across um, that may be a lot a lot easier to do, do it that way. The other thing is the bigger you make it 
the U-bend in between the back and the front where the water passes through, on the bigger ones you can have multiple, you can have two of those. And the reason, and on the marine tank, which if you have a look at that video, I use an overflow box on that one, I've got two U-bends in that one. And the reason for two is, or the reason I got this, the one with the two in it, was that if one of them picks up too much air or stops flowing, I've always got the backup of the other one. So if you want to make it bigger, put two in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this piece of acrylic. And I'm bending this piece of acrylic so that it can fit like a U-shape over the edge of the aquarium. Now, the question you may ask is why have I got a piece of wood here? Now what I do is when I do this kind of bending with acrylic is I find my, the line that I want, so I've marked it as you can see on the acrylic, the black line and I mark a center line on the piece of wood underneath. I then drill two tiny holes and I then attach that piece of acrylic to the piece of wood and that allows me to hold it and manipulate it as I'm working this acrylic, as I'm bending it to flush it up against this piece of wood on the side to create the U. Now, how wide must this piece of wood be? Now, I determine that piece of wood based on the aquarium that it's going onto. So if you've got an aquarium that you're using that you now want to put an overflow box on and it has got struts going across the top or struts across the side, wherever you want to put your overflow box, you want your U-bend to go over your strut. So what you do is your reinforcement strut that goes along the front, along the back, and if you've got a rimless tank, it doesn't matter, you then just go, you can go a lot narrower. Um, and on this tank, I could have gone a lot narrower as well. Uh, but I wanted to show you why, uh, why I use the wood and what the purpose is of the wood, besides it giving me the ability to bend on, um, to use it to bend the acrylic against. I use that word to determine how wide the top of the U must be so it can fit over any reinforcement struts that the aquarium may have. So just bear that in mind. If you've got you know, wide struts because you're using it on a big tank, wide struts, just make sure you use a longer piece. Do the same thing. Put a nice block of wood there. Screw it down so it's firm and you can manipulate the acrylic when it's warm. And then it will fit over the reinforcement strut. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start by bending this. And the method I use is I'm just going to use a, a heat gun. And I'm going to warm up the acrylic on both sides and then start gently start bending the acrylic. Um, and I keep another piece of block as well for two reasons. The same thickness as that one is when I get to the bottom and I push it against, I can just make sure it's more or less, you know, straight down or square down the sides. And I can also use that to manipulate or push against the acrylic when it's around the edge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do that. Um, and I don't expect you to sit and watch me heat up acrylic and bend acrylic. So I think what I'll do is let me get this set up. Let me start heating this up and bending it. Um, and then once I've bent it over, I'll, um, I'll show you what I've done there. Um, and then we'll go from there to the next build. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've taken that long piece that I showed you, I've heated it, I've applied heat with a heat gun on the seams, um, and I've bent it using that block that it was attached to, to bend it across that. And then I've used the other little piece that I had just to make sure that I'm getting it more or less equal. Um, and then once it's dried, or oh, not dry, cool down. I now need to remove the screws. And I haven't used, you know, massive screws or anything. It, it just needs to hold it in place so that you can work with it and manipulate it. Okay, and take that out. All right. And there we've got our bend. Now, I probably... I might want it a little bit more, but that gives you the idea. I've got the U-bend, that's the side that's going to go on the inside of the aquarium, that's the side that's on the outside of the aquarium, and we'll now continue building it. Now, you can see what I mean by 
the, the thickness that you use to go in here to determine how much of a bend you have. On something that's this thin, I mean we wouldn't use it on something like this, but something that's this thin, you know, you would make the bend half of this. Um, if you were putting it on an aquarium that's got a brace, that would be perfect to go over the brace, um, you know, if, if the brace was, was that kind of width or a little bit less. And this is a, this is a 25 mil uh, piece of wood, so uh, that inside is about 25 mils and it'll fit over. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cool down now for a second. We'll put that one side. While that cools down, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build the box that goes on the inside. Now, for the box on the inside, there's a couple of things here that I've done. You can see that, the, and this is the, the shorter side is the side going on the inside, the way that I've built it. And the way that I do these things or try and, or do the measurements is, really, what I do is I sit in my garage, I take a whole lot of offcuts of acrylic, and I go on and build an overflow box. I take my tape measure, I go, okay, what kind of pieces have I got? I find a piece, I measure it. And then from there, it's really just, you know what, I'm building this right now with you. Um, if I missed out something, we'll see it quickly during the build. If I got a measurement wrong, it will show during the build. But, <coughs> excuse me, I don't draw it out and, you know, write the exact measurements. I, I start with this piece, a long piece, and I go, okay, I want to build it from there. What am I thinking? How wide do I want it? Use the tape measure, check, you know, you know, sizes, and then I just start cutting, and then I go from there. Anyway, so the piece with the grooves that I've got on this side is the piece that's going on the inside of the aquarium. And the box that goes on that side, which is the one, the overflow box, um, to prevent, you know, with the holes in it to prevent your fish from getting siphoned in, I build that box separately. I don't build it onto this frame. And the reason I do that is I make the same holes in the, the back of the box that's going on there, the same slots or grooves. And what will happen is the box will fit on there. I've then got nylon nuts and um, bolts and nuts that then go through there that you just tighten by hand. And that then allows me to move the, uh, the box on the inside up or down, allowing me to determine what I want the water level to be on the inside of my aquarium based on the overflow that's going through this. And that's the reason why you see I have those grooves cut in the piece that's hanging on. And why I have, sorry, it's the other way around. And why I have these grooves cut in the box that's going to fit onto that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start building this box. Um, and it's the normal, you've, you've seen me build before with acrylic. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I clean off the edges uh, with alcohol swabs where it's going. I then at first will use the Acribond 105 just to create the structure. And then I will use the Acrifix to put a strong bond on it um, and, and secure it so that I feel comfortable it's not going to break or anything, you know, it's not going to come apart. All right, let me, let me do that. Let me build the, the actual box. Um, I'll stop the video again here because I'm, I'm sure people don't want to sit and watch me build um, the, the box. All right, be back in a sec. Okay, so what I've done now is I've built the little box that's going on the inside and that's what it looks like and I've built everything out of clear acrylic because uh, it makes it easier for me to show how it actually works. Now depending on what the background is of your aquarium, if your aquarium has got a black background like my marine uh, tank then you could build this box out of uh, black acrylic um, and the acrylic that I'm using on this build uh, is four and a half mil thick acrylic. Okay, so that box is now built. Now, this box will fit on like that. So this is where the little nylon or plastic screws come in. Um, so I can just show you, let me just show you what my intention was there. Um, 
And I've just bought this from uh, my local J Car. Uh, that's the brand, um, and it's uh, nylon nuts and nylon bolts or nylon screws. Um, but you can buy the plastic ones as well. Okay, so I'll just get two of those out. Okay. Right, so what will happen is, and I'll lift it up now so that you can see it a little bit better. Um, we'll put, the, put it through the back. That's the only thing, depend, you know, if you make this too small, um, the, the U-bend, you may have difficulty then getting, getting these in there. And if you make your little, you know, ideally I try and make it so that I can get my fingers or my hands in and, you know, do what I need to do on the inside of these things. Um, We're not take up too much time tightening that up. Um, just want to show you the concept. Um, and sometimes what I do is for these nylon nuts and bolts um, is I put a bit of silicone spray on them before I start turning them on. And I also use a um, I normally put them put the nut on first um, so that it just runs on the thread. Anyway, I haven't tightened the other one, but you can see the concept. That allows me now to adjust. So in the tank, um, it's like that. I can now adjust that as I need it by tightening. So let's say I want that quite the water level quite high because of the flow. I will just go and tighten. And because these don't take a lot of pressure, they don't have to be super tight. Um, once the water's in them, they're not going to be super tight. Okay, the other side's not tightened, but you can see what I mean. And what I'll do is I'll tighten up before I run it, so we can, you know, you can see exactly how it works. Okay, so uh, that's what I'm doing. So that's what we're doing on that one. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to build the box that goes on, sorry, now I have to take this off. And before I use the Acrifix um, cement, let's call it cement, to make sure that this is effectively watertight, the container, as well as that there's a really strong bond. Before I do any of that, what I do is I just build it as I've done now, and then I will do the Acrifix right at the end. The Acrifix will effectively be the last thing that I do on this, on this part of the build. Um, what I still need to do is make the U-Bend, and there's a couple of ways we can do that, and we'll get to that as well. All right, so that's the container that goes on that side, and we use the nylon or plastic nuts and bolts to regulate how far up and down it goes. Now, on the other side, this is the side that's now going to go to the sump. So what I do here is I actually don't build a box here. I build straight on to this back, okay? Um, and the other thing I do is the bottom piece, the piece that goes at the bottom of this one, has got a hole drilled in it. And that hole is to take the fitting that will go down to the sump, and I'll show you that. The other thing that I've done on the back of this one, and hopefully you can see it, is I've got a, there's two holes drilled, there only needs to be one, and the reason there's two is because I, um, I didn't have a long enough screw and I uh, used... Uh, used a formal one the same as the other ones but it just wasn't long enough so I've just put through a three more one which is smaller now effectively what happens is this just turns in and when it goes onto the side of the aquarium 
right? You turn this in. Okay, and what it does is it keeps it keeps it steady or stable so that it's not swaying. And that's the reason for that at the bottom. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to glue on the box that goes on this side. And uh, then we'll, we'll acro fix it up after that. And then we'll go on to the next step. So for now, um, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the section that fits on here. All right, let me do that and then uh, I'll show you once that's done and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so what I've done is I've now glued on um, the side compartment or the side box and that's the one that's going to end up being on the outside that will then flow down to the sump. What I'm going to do now is I am going to start putting on um, or I have started putting on uh, I just need to see where I've put it on. Um, I'm going to be putting on the Acrifix now to, to really bond it. Um, and I'm going to do that over the next few hours so that it can dry. Um, the other thing I will do is I am going to put um, a fitting in as well. So um, a fitting through the hole which I made through the bottom and that's what goes down to the sump. So I'm going to put that in. I'll use a bit of, that's what I've got the silicone for. I'll use a bit of silicone around that to, to bond it. Um, and then I'm going to leave it to dry for a while, for a, for a good couple of hours. And then once it's dried, what we'll do is we'll then set it up on this tank as best we can. We'll probably just use a bucket as the sump. Um, I don't think I've got a small enough pump to pump water back to the tank but we may just pour water in and you can see. The other thing I still need to do is I need to go and construct or make the, uh, the water supply, the U-bend that goes over this. So I'm gonna go do, uh, probably start working on that now as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna use the Acrofix. Um, I'm gonna start gluing up or continue gluing up with the Acrofix to make sure that it's really well bonded. Leave that to dry, I'm gonna, put the little fitting in the bottom with some silicone just to make sure that it doesn't leak and um, then I'll, I'll give you an update where we're at and, and the next steps and some of the things that you need to consider um, when using the U-Bend from a water, a, a, how much water is in each compartment when you're using the U-Bend. Alright, so I will be back soon. Right, so it's been a uh, few hours now, probably about five or six hours. Uh, maybe a little bit less. Anyway, um, so the construction is finished. I've put in the stronger, the Acrifix um, on, the, on the joins. Ideally, I would leave this for 24 hours um, and not put water in it uh, tonight. But I'd like to just show you how it runs. Um, the other thing is, uh, at the bottom, as you can see, that's where the little bolt or screw, nylon screw comes through. It rests against the side. And that's where I use the little, um, the little tool, tool out of the, the die and tap set to um, just cut in the, the, the screw for the screw to turn in. Um, the other thing which I've done is I've now put this in. Uh, this will effectively connect to whatever fitting you have. That'll then go down to your sump. For, the, for just to run it to show you how it works, I'm just going to put a straight pipe onto it. Um, and we'll run that. The other thing is I have found a old uh, pump that I had. It's, it's, it's a little bit powerful. It's about 3,000 liters per hour. So I'm just going to try and use that and we'll just bend the pipe to slow down the flow or something and hopefully we don't have a water disaster. Um, the other thing is I've put it in and I've adjusted the screws on the inside that I spoke about uh, in order to set the height of this box for the water level. Now, and the other thing of course is the, the, the U-bend that fits over um, where the water will now 
transfer from this side inside the aquarium to outside to this container and then down to the sump. Now the critical thing with this little U-bend and if you go and have a look at one of my previous videos on how to heat multiple tanks from one tank I use these U-bends from one aquarium to another to the next to the next to the next and pump the water back to the first one from the last one or from each one to each one um, and, and the water then flows through these. Now the important thing with these is you don't want any air in it. So it's critical that when you prime it you get all the air out of it and I'll run through how I do that. Uh, the other thing that's also really important to remember and that's the one thing that I probably would change on, my, on, on, on the build like this if I do it again. The slots that I made in the back of this box that goes inside the aquarium where the little nuts go through or the bolts go through that you can regulate the height. Those slots that I made, I've probably made them a little bit too long because you can still get water coming in, for, in from the back. So I probably shouldn't have gone down much further than just below the intakes with those slots. And, and the reason that's important is, what you must remember is that when, when this is in, let's put it the other way around, when this is in and it's running, what, what is really important is that if you have a power failure or something happens, what you want is to make sure that there's water in this side covering the bottom of the pipe and there's water in this side covering the bottom of the pipe at all times so that when the, the pump starts up again if you had a power failure all that will happen is there's water in the pipe already it's preset um, and the siphon will just start happening automatically or as the pressure increases it pushes the water over the other side so really important to make sure and that's why you'll notice on this side what I've done is I've put an extra little piece of pipe into the fitting to make sure that from a height point of view the water will always be, as you can see, the water will always be at that level when, it's, when the pump's not running, but this pipe will always, always be underwater. And on, on this side, same concept. I've had a look at where the, the grooves are in, the, in this little uh, box and made sure that this pipe is always below those grooves so it will always be in the water all right so what I'm going to do now is um, I've I filled up this our, our demo or our test tank um, I am now just going to pop this pipe in hang it on the side grab the filter uh, plug it in try and just twist the pipe so it doesn't blow too much water get some water, uh, get it pumping from the bucket um, and then show you how it actually works. So give me a few minutes and I'll get that set up and then we'll run it and we can see how it actually works. Okay, so I've got it set up. Um, I've primed the, the U-Bend, this one here, and I've just unplugged it so that it can go down to its lowest level. Uh, let me just take this pump. So I've put some, some batting in the end of the pipe to just slow down the flow because otherwise it's just too much on this uh, little aquarium. So you can see now if this was a power failure, this is what would happen. It would just keep trickling out. The box would keep getting lower and lower as you can see um, until it gets to the point where no more of the water can leave either this box or that box which is basically now, and that is where it will stay. But what is important is that the U-bend ends, both ends, are actually in water. And that means that there's still water inside this, this U-bend. As soon as the pressure increases on this side, it'll push the water through to the other side. What I'll do is let me just switch it on. Um, and you can see the pump running. And then what I'll do is I will I will uh, lower the camera so that you can actually see it running into, into the bucket. Oh, the, the other thing is, let me just stop that for a second. Let me stop that for a second. The, the other thing was, 
how do you prime the U-bend? Now, there's a, there's a couple of methods, so I'm just going to pull this one out. Okay, so there's a couple of methods that you can use to prime these or get them full of water. The one is that you drill, oh, I'm missing. The one is that you drill a little hole through the center in between, and you put a tap in there that you can connect an airline tube to. You connect the airline tube, you open the tap, you then suck on it, it will then suck the water up into the tube. Once you get water into the, the airline tube, you close the tap and then that whole U-bend will be full. The other method that I use is I just take an airline tube and I, I more or less measure, um, just on the outside, go, well, that's more or less where center is. It's going to come down to there. I take that piece. Now, depending on how you've made this, you may struggle to get it all the way in. But what I do is then once it's in, once I've got the airline tube in, I just bend it to keep it in place. I then, with it bent, with the airline tube still in it, I then take that and pop it in. And then siphon. And that should be it. And if I've done it correctly, um, normally I'd have a bit more water in this side when I do it, but if I've done it correctly, then once the pump starts running, we should see the water flow out of that hole on that side there. So let's just get it running. And in this scenario, imagine the bucket that's on the ground, which I'll show you now, is your sump. And this is the return pipe from your sump. Um, I've just taken one of my siphon pipes. I haven't cut it down. I've just taken it. It's, it's coiled on the floor. I was hoping it was going to reduce the flow as well. Okay, it's flowing now, um, the water's going over, so what I'll do is, give me a second, I'll just readjust the camera so you can actually see what's happening further down. Okay, so as you can see, um, it's being pumped up from the bucket through this pipe into the tank. The water's flowing through into the first container, so on the inside of the aquarium. You've got your U-bend that's full of water and that, that's now got water in it. So as the pressure increases this side, it pushes it over to the other side. As it fills up on the other side, you've got your outlet and that then runs all the way down to your sump. And that's it. Um, and once it's running, and that's why, you know, I, for me preferably, I like to have two of these U-bends. So in case one picks up a lot of air, then... Um, you know, you've always got the other one running from a safety point of view. The other thing as well is if you can get clear acrylic and bend this pipe with clear acrylic or get a clear acrylic bend so you can actually see this air in it, that's, that's even more ideal. But if you can't, then, then this is the way to do it. And that's it, as simple as that. Um, as soon as we stop the flow, Both of them will get to a point where no longer any water is, being, is flowing out. Okay, and it's just about there. This is on quite a wobbly table. You can see there's still water in the bottom and there's water there and both the, you, the tubes are in that. So long as they remain in the water, their ends, it's perfectly fine because the water will remain in the U-bend. Um, now when the power comes back on again, as the tank starts filling up from the sump, it will just run back into the box 
and you know depending on the size aquarium you've got you obviously will use the appropriate size pump and you'll use the appropriate size overflow box or you'll build one accordingly. This overflow box is fine to test and to use on something this, this small um, but the pump is the problem. It's a 2,800-3,000 litres uh, per hour pump um, that's pumping into a 20 litre aquarium which is not ideal. Right and then that's it. Um, as the water starts flowing in it will just keep going off. Now the other thing you can do is where, the, where this outlet is on this side here is you can put in this pipe that's there that regulates the height of your water you can make that a little bit longer drill it full of tiny holes and then put a piece of sponge around it that then almost becomes like a, a very coarse sponge though make sure it's very coarse because you don't want it to stop the water flow um, but that almost becomes a bit of a, almost like a pre-filter that takes out possibly some of the bigger pieces of debris or food stuff that's flowing to that, that'll get caught in um, that sponge. So if I grab, if I grab one of mine out of the one that I've got running on my marine tank, without making too much of a mess, as you can see, that, so that's what I've got there. So that's the pipe, okay, it's got the sponge, this, this uh, sponge is higher than the, the pipe, but you could drill a whole lot of holes in this pipe, um, and, or make that, drill a whole lot of holes in that pipe there, make it a little bit longer, put this sponge really coarse, it's not going to block up, and that works perfect. Just pop this back. Okay, let me just stop it there and then we'll end off the video. Well, that's it. Um, that's how you go about making an overflow box. Um, great little project to do on a weekend. Uh, if you can get, you know, go get some acrylic, off-cut acrylic and give it a go. Try it. Um, you know, do it on something small first, test it out, see that you're comfortable with it. From a project point of view, I'd say it's a medium difficulty project if I could call it that it's not a you know it's not a straightforward like the built-in filter where you just cut a couple of pieces and you silicone it together and you plonk you know just put it in the tank and seal it off and there you've got a an inbuilt filter um, this probably takes a little bit more time uh, well it does definitely takes a bit more time and you know you have to work with some heating to bend the acrylic uh, you have to drill all the holes for the overflow um, slots at the back if you want to but again you know you don't you don't have to draw the slots at the back you don't have to make this front compartment adjustable if you know exactly where you want to do you know if it was going to be running on here I could build this this box as you know as I built it without the slots in it um, then have a look where I wanted it and then just uh, with acrylic uh, the 105 just attach it to the bend um, or the you know the, the u-bend that goes over the aquarium so I could do, you know, you could do that as well, but then that is where it is. Where at the moment now I can adjust it, you know, up and down as I require. Um, other than that, the things to be careful of, obviously, is make sure that the U-Bend's got water in it and that you've primed it correctly. Um, if you can, get a clear pipe. Clear pipe will work so much better because you can see the water in it. You can see it flowing through. You know, you know if there's too much air in it or whatever the case is. If you make the box a little bit bigger, uh, go with two so you always have safety that way and very importantly this back box make sure that you construct that back box really well you know even if you need to put a support acrylic support pieces around the outside um, just to make sure that it's it's you know there's good integrity that that box is strong because you know it's the one that's got the water in it it's the one that's on the outside of your aquarium and if you're going to be using this on a marine aquarium or something, then if this goes, you know, obviously it will keep siphoning out until it gets to a level where it then, you know, catches air on this side and then, um, and, and then that's it. Um, but it will automatically just keep going as where, you know, in the box now it's, it's held at a certain level. And that's it. There's probably not a lot more I can tell you about it. Um, but a you know, great project and, and really awesome to, to have these overflow boxes 
especially where you've got aquariums that you've got stuff in and you want to, like I've said, you want to increase the load on that aquarium, put more fish in it, stock a little bit higher, but you don't have the water volume, put a sump in, overflow box, leave the fish in there, connect it all up, put a pump back to it. You know, and the pump doesn't have to just be a pump. If you've got a canister filter running on an aquarium at the moment, you can use the canister filter to be your pump that runs from your sump back up to your main tank again um, for the return. The other thing is, um, it's probably not so much to do with this, it's just to do more with returns. When you have a return pipe that comes back to your main aquarium from a sump, there's, there's, there's just one thing that, that you must always be aware of when, when um, having a return. A lot of the time, us hobbyists, aquarists, we put the return just under the water because we don't want it splashing or making bubbles in the, in the aquarium a lot of the time or we want it, you know, we'll put a bend on it and, and the bend goes under the water and it can push the water in a certain direction. The important thing to remember is that when your pump goes off, this pipe that has been supplying water to your aquarium now becomes a siphon itself and it will back siphon water from your main aquarium back into your sump. Now, depending on how deep you had this or how deep you have it in the water in your main aquarium, it'll keep going until that pipe gets air. And if your sump is, you know, if your sump is running at, let's say, 75% water, you've only got 25% before your sump floods. So that's very important to remember that. And the way to overcome that is if you put a bend or something in, is drill a small hole above the water line into the pipe so that if it goes off and it back, it starts back siphoning, um, if there's a hole in the pipe, it will, it will suck air back. And what I normally do, like on the marine aquarium, um, I drill the hole into the pipe at an angle, pointing down towards the water, so that when the pump is running, it's obviously gonna be pushing some water through that hole, and then that just runs on top of the water um, and, and then when it switches off, it just back, when it wants to back siphon, it, it grabs air through that hole and the siphon stops immediately. So that's just something to be aware of if you're uh, running water from a sump back into your main tank. Anyway guys, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this project. Um, it was fun making it uh, and fun building it. I need to find some way to use it. Um, but like I said, you know, make it as big as you like. Um, can't go too small because you need water volume in both sides um, but you know with a small pump I could even run it on a 20 if I wanted to with a sump underneath so give it a go try it out um, let me know what you think of this project um, I enjoyed it you know just if you want to add something in the comments about what you thought of this project in particular and if you'd like to see more of these kind of things I know that people have been asking me to do a little bit more on breeding uh, the challenge at the moment is I'm, I'm struggling to find stuff that I want to breed. So there's been a lot of people requesting angels. Um, and it's just finding some nice angels to breed um, and then running you through that process. So I am looking and, and maybe tomorrow being Sunday, I might go and take a drive around and see if I can find some, some nice angels somewhere. Um, and we can breed some angels. So once again, thanks for the comments um, and thanks for the subscriptions. I do appreciate it. Have a really good weekend further. Have a good week. Uh, take it easy. Be safe. Look after yourselves. Till the next video. Urban Fish Keeper out.